Welcome to Abu Dhabi, the capital of the United Arab Emirates, which will host the penultimate round of the 2014 UIM F1H2O World Championship. Abu Dhabi is one of the world's most opulent, glamorous, and wealthiest cities. One of seven sheikhdoms in the United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi is oil rich and not bashful about showing it. You just have to look up at that magnificent, gleaming skyscraper skyline. Abu Dhabi offers it all. Leisure, recreation, beaches and sports, business and nightlife. The city has come a long way in the last 20 years and it stands today as a shining testament to what can be achieved with a clear vision and the resources to carry that vision out. But Abu Dhabi is also a place that is firmly rooted in its history, customs, and traditions. The people of Abu Dhabi are very proud of their heritage, and there is a deep and abiding connection to a rich and illustrious past. There could be no more perfect venue to host the crucial round four of the UIM F1H2O season. The UAE has a keen interest in powerboat racing and young F1H2O fans were thrilled at the opportunity to meet two-time world champion Sami Celio. Now the tour goes into the final stretch to determine who will be world champion in 2014. But first, let's look back at what happened in the last round in Doha. was a nail-biting round three in Doha, Qatar that saw some of the most dramatic and exciting racing in F1H2O. Qatar team's Sean Torrente beat China CTIC driver Philip Schiap for pole position and led the race from the start with Torrente's teammate and three-time defending world champion Alex Carella in third. Just four laps into the race, an explosion and a fire put an end to Zhang Ziwei's race as he jumped in the water to escape the flames. Incredibly, the very same thing happened to Jesper Fors. There was a second yellow flag when Yusuf Al Rubayan barrel rolled a few laps later. On the restart, Alex Carella got the jump on Philip Schiap to move into second position but he later drove straight through a boy and was DQ'd. In the end, Torrente led from start to finish to win his second ever Grand Prix. Schiap, runner-up, Sammy Celio, third. Corella's lead in the world standings was cut down to just 10 points over Schiap and 11 points over Torrente going into the Grand Prix of the UAE. drivers from nine teams and 11 different nations competing in Abu Dhabi. Despite a disappointing round three, Alex Carella is still top of the world standings and on course in his quest to equal Guido Capolini's record of four consecutive world championship titles. His teammate Sean Torrente is back in title contention with that win in round three, now just 11 points behind Carella. It was a great result last week, um, but last week is last week. We're in the fight, which is good, but we, we never felt like we were out of the fight. So we're just going to come here, we're going to do the same thing, you know, focus and, and uh, try to put our best foot forward, have fun, and see where we end up the weekend. But the driver to look out for is Philip Schiap of China's CTIC team. 
His new, more built boat is incredibly good and incredibly fast. And he was just 10 points behind Corella before round four in Abu Dhabi. Having missed out in Qatar, Team Abu Dhabi was back with veteran and former world number two, Daniel Kamzi, in boat number five. Inshallah, I try my best, uh, my country, Abu Dhabi, and uh, I hope uh, tomorrow we get uh, first and second. We try the best. His teammate once again is the talented Ahmed Al Hamali, who was hungry for a win in home waters. I mean, oh, it's gonna be uh, the best thing I can give it to the to the Sheikh Sultan. A third place finish in Qatar for Madcroc Baba Racing Team Sami Selio put the two-time world champion from Finland back in the game as he continued to adjust to his new Baba boat. Yeah, the boat feels great, but we have still a lot to learn there. The setup is not perfect. I had some difficulties this morning, but uh, luckily there was no technical issues. So it's only only for the setup. Find the right prop and give the uh, find a good balance on the boat, and then uh, we can do good times. And let's not forget Eric Stark of Team Nautica. With a runner-up finish in China and a solid sixth place result in Qatar, the young Swede has proven he can race with the big boys in F1 H2O. In the world standing, I'm fourth. And uh, I'm, you know, we are really thrilled in the team for that. You know, it's our first season in, in Formula One and we just expect to, to finish the races. And now we are fourth, so it's, it's really amazing. And, the Abu Dhabi circuit is very flat and very fast. There are five left-hand buoys and one right-hander. The thing here is that the, the conditions are more or less perfect. It uh, means that we are pushing quite high and uh, the boats are running very high on the water, very loose. And uh, a small gust of wind or a small, uh, small uh, wave from another boat can cause a problem. but. Uh, if you compare to the conditions we had last last week, this is perfect. Qualifying determines the starting lineup. Three sessions. In Q1, the 18-boat field is reduced to 12 for Q2, with just six boats remaining in Q3, where drivers get two laps and the course all to themselves to set their fastest times in their bid for pole position. When the water's smooth, it's very important to pull for the race because it makes it more difficult to pass, and there's a lot of very good drivers right now, so the, the pole is very key to the race for sure. In Q1, Motorglass F1 driver Francesco Cantando just managed to make the cut in 12th position ahead of Team Sweden rookie Jesper Fors and Portuguese veteran Duarte Benevente of F1 GC Atlantic team. Both Caldwell team drivers Ivan Brigada and Thomas Cermak were also out, as was China CTIC's Xiong Ziwei and Yusuf Al Rubayan a DNS due to two yellow cards. Q2 was intense. Daniel Kamzi started off well in the session, but couldn't keep the pace up. Just tenths of a second separated the top drivers, all battling for a top six finish right till the end. Corella struggled, but eventually made it in to Q3, as did Sami Celio. Cantando just missed out in seventh. Also out in Q2 were Bartek Marsowek, Philip Roms, Moritz Stromoy, and Jonas Anderson, a DNS due to mechanical problems. Q3, a shootout between the top six boats. Celio goes out first. He has the most pole positions of any driver on the tour, but it wasn't his day, setting a time of 47.34. Ahmed Al Hamali was next. The Abu Dhabi driver was in fine form, Perfect around that right-hander, managing the gusty conditions well to keep the boat gliding low. He beats Celio's time by more than... ...more than 1.7 seconds to take provisional pole. Next, Alex Corella, 
going for his 11th career pole. The three-time world champion knew what was at stake here following his zero points showing at Doha in round three. But he was just seven hundredths of a second short of Al Hamali. Next up, Philip Schiap. In his second lap, despite a mistake, he managed his boat's exceptional pace brilliantly to glide in with a 45.33 second lap. Schiap gets provisional pole. Team Nautica's Eric Stark, the biggest new talent on the tour, went out to beat Schiap. He had trouble keeping that nose down, but he was still exceptionally fast. He came in at 45.53 seconds, not able to beat Schiap, but second fastest so far, with one driver left, Sean Torrente. In a repeat of Doha, pole position would be fought out between Torrente and Schiap. Torrente went out all guns blazing. He gave his all. A mistake there coming around boy number five. The boat's nose lifts, costing crucial hundredths of a second. Torrente was still fast, bringing his boat in. Just 1.5 tenths of a second behind Schiap. This time, Philip Schiap wins the Q3 duel. It's my pole position, and I'm very happy for, moi, for me, for my guys, for my team. It's very, very, very nice. Philip Schiap wins his first ever pole position. Torrente second on the grid, followed by Stark, Alhamali, Corella, and Celio starting in sixth. Abu Dhabi rolled out the red carpet for F1 H2O teams and drivers, giving them a taste of the world-famous Arab hospitality. Race day. Teams have a free practice in the morning to zero in on their final setups for the race. Shiap had a problem in practice, his engine losing RPM. The situation looked grim as the China team tried to figure out what went wrong. We check all, we are afraid to break the engine and we check everything before the warm up. Replacing the engine block would mean Shiap relinquishing pole and starting at the back. It was crucial that they be able to fix it without changing the engine. Uh, we really don't know we have problem with the engine and uh, it takes this RPM and the RPM going down a little bit and uh, it's not stable. We do nothing from yesterday and something happened and uh, we really don't know yet. They tested in the water with precious little time remaining before the race. At the moment, maybe we have a little bit problem of leaking water on this piece or on this piece. Nerves were showing. They left no stone unturned, but the clock was ticking and they were still unable to identify what went wrong. We are uh, trying on the very fast way to change uh, all the electric part, uh, to put uh, a full package of electric on this new en on this engine, but we have to be very fast to understand what's happened and try to find the way uh, to save the race. In the end, they decided to stick with the same engine, but with big question marks hanging. Could it make it through the race without a breakdown? The crowds gathered for the race, the anticipation building for the countdown. I'm not gonna stay on the back and watch. I'm gonna push hard to be in the podium. So we will make ma maximum attack today and let's hope that we can be at least in the podium. Eric Stark in third will be looking to continue. He was fine form. Al Hamali fourth on the grid ahead of Corella and Celio. 
Cantando seventh ahead of Stromoy with Alcamzi, Anderson and Benevente at the back. Ooh, it will be tough. You know, many, many good drivers around me, but um, try to maybe gain a few positions in the start. It's a long race. I hope for my mechanic uh, everything is perfect and uh, maybe we can win the race. Can the CTIC team make it through the race? Will Torrente get to the top of the championship? Can Carilla get back to his winning ways? The race begins. Chiap leads the pack to the commitment boy with Torrente right beside him. So far, so good for Chiap. Eric Stark off to a slow start from the pontoon, immediately dropping back on the starting straightaway. Alex Carella gets left behind in Celio's wake. Chiap is first to the turn. Torrente right on his tail. Ahmed Al Hamali up in third after Stark drops right back. It's a terrible start from the young Swede, who was third on the grid. Corella, who started in fifth, trying to make his way up the field as they come around turn boy number six. Eric Stark has dropped down to fifth behind Celio on the start lap. Shiap rockets down that 598 meter straightaway to turn boy one as the crowds watch on. Francesco Cantando in seventh, Coming around the outside of Corella as Corella overhauls Stark, adding to the young Swede's woes. Chiap enjoying the clear waters ahead of him thanks to his first ever pole position start, and he is blasting away, making the most of this. Corella sets his sights on Celio, almost colliding. Celio cuts in hard, shutting Corella out. Eric Stark's downward slide continues as Cantando passes him to move up into sixth. Stark tries to get some speed going, but he's passed by Thani Alkamzi and then his Team Nautica teammate, Moritz Stromoy. At the back of the field, F1 Atlantic's Duarte Benevente collides with Caldwell driver Thomas Cermak. Stromoy up in seventh with Alkamzi right beside her followed by Stark. Philip Schiap extends his lead over Sean Torrente as he closes out lap one. His engine performing beautifully so far. The positions after lap one, Schiap and Torrente leading the pack, Ahmed Al Hamali third, followed by Sami Celio and Alex Carella. The three-time world champion still leads the world standings, but a fifth place finish may not be enough for him to keep it at the end of this race. Ivan Brigada at the back gets overhauled by Duarte Benevente as the Caldwell drivers bring up the rear. With two laps of this 37 lap race completed, Cantando is in sixth behind Carella. Eric Stark ends his downward slide as he passes Team Abu Dhabi veteran Dani Alkamzi. The two Team Nautica drivers, Stromoy and Stark, now share seventh and eighth positions. In the lead, Schiap has already started lapping the back markers in lap three as the Frenchman now has to weave his way through the field and say goodbye to those clear waters. In lap four, Shiap laps the trailing Codwell boats as he tries to keep Torrente at a distance, knowing just how dangerous an adversary the American can be. With 12 laps down, there's no change in the positions at the top. Ahmed Al Hamali continues his pursuit of Torrente, looking to get a podium in home waters in front of his home crowd. Behind the top three boats, a titanic struggle continues between two-time world champion Sami Celio and three-time defending world champion Alex Carella. These two have dominated the sport for the past four years as they struggle to move up into the top three here. Sean Torrente laps Polish driver Bartek Marsowek of Motorglass F1 team. <laughs> as he trails Shiap by nearly three and a half seconds. 
but he enjoys a comfortable 12 second lead over Al Hamali in third while Celio tries to hold off the challenge from Corella with Cantando in sixth ahead of Stromoy and Stark and Al Kamzi back in ninth ahead of Marsoek, Anderson and Philip Roms. Already out of the race are Yusuf Al Rubayan, Thomas Cermak and Ivan Brigada. His Highness Dr. Sheikh Sultan bin Khalifa Al Nahyan watches on. Jonas Anderson is out of the race with mechanical problems. That's three out of four races he's been unable to finish this year. Sami Celio in fourth position is slowly but surely gaining ground on Ahmed Al Hamali up ahead as Celio gets more and more comfortable with his new Baba boat. Carilla needs to make up for a disastrous race in Doha and he knows a fifth place here may just not be enough in his bid for a fourth consecutive world title. 25 laps down, 12 laps to go. Al Hamali keeps up his distance with Celio. Carilla keeps up the chase with Celio. He's going all out trying to claw his way back up the pack. Doing everything he can here with 10 laps left in the race. Moritz Stromoy in seventh position behind Francesco Cantando. At the head of the race, Philip Schiap's lead over Torrente has narrowed down to two and a half seconds as the man from Miami keeps up the pressure on the Frenchman. The biggest challenge for Schiap is in Torrente, but the wall of backmarkers that he has to weave through without compromising his pace. Torrente almost gets Schiap on that turn. Any mistake from Schiap now could give Torrente the chance he needs to grab the lead. China CTIC's Philip Dessertan tries to clear the path ahead for Schiap, asking Team Nautica to make way. Stromoy moves aside as Schiap passes the Norwegian with just six laps left in the race. Look at that, Torrente has closed the gap with Schiap to just 1.67 seconds. Can he do it? Can the Team Qatar driver pass the Frenchman with just six laps left? Dessertan now trying to get his man past Marshoek as Schiap opens his lead a bit. The laps are counting down. Schiap moves past Contando, moving up on Al Kamzi, the last man on his path to his second ever Grand Prix win. Dessertan's on the job, trying to clear his man's path. Schiap passes Al Kamzi without a hitch, and there it is. On his birthday, Philip Schiap wins the Grand Prix of the UAE, his second ever win. <laughs> Torrente is runner-up. Ahmed Al Hamali, a well-deserved third. It was a real team effort for China CTIC, and kudos go to Schiap's mechanics. Good job, bro. You drove your ass off. Good job. You are very good, huh? See you in Georgia. Okay. Okay. See you in Georgia. Okay. Georgia okay. again. Two seconds, huh? Uh -huh. Thank you. The rule is that you need to move when I come. <laughs> I'm very happy. I have a good boat for rough water, but not for, I mean, flat water. And I do what I can do. I continue the race. I get the podium. This is the most important to continue the race. I got some, uh, some pushing from. Uh, for next year. Race results, Celio holds Carell off for fourth spot. Cantando sixth, Stromoy beats teammate Stark to seventh. Al Kamzi makes two with ninth place, with Zhong Ziwei ending the race in 13th spot. We have a great team and uh, yeah. even on a bad situation like we was this morning, we continue to get the power and uh, we get the result. That brings a new name to the top of the driver's standings, Schiap. Three points clear of Carella with Torrente in third as the title becomes a three-horse race going into the final round in Sharjah. I'm very afraid uh, on the first line. I, uh, I'm afraid to uh, the engine uh, not good working. And just one turn, uh, okay. Now it's correct. And uh, we can do it. And 
very, very good day for me. It's my birthday, you know, and uh, I'm very, very happy for me, for my team. First of all, we arrived in Doha 31 points down from the championship. I'm a pretty optimistic guy, and I didn't even think we had a shot. And um, we leave here six points from the lead. And um, for me, that's you go to the last race with a chance, that's all you can ask for. The race today, Philippe had, it just had speed on us. We, I think we had better handle, but he had speed. Um, so now we go to Sharjah, and it all comes down to Sharjah again, and we're just going to just gonna fight to the end, just like we always do, and, and hopefully this time I'll be on the top step. That concludes the Grand Prix of the UAE in Abu Dhabi. See you in Sharjah for the final round where the 2014 UIM F1H2O World Championship will be decided.